Hello everyone. In last video, we have gone through the maturation phase of that formation of spermatids. Under the formation of spermatid, we have studied multiplication phase, growth phase, and maturation phase. From two successive division of meiosis, the spermatids are produced. Now let us discuss the spermiogenesis. Spermiogenesis. Spermiogenesis is the final stage of the spermatogenesis. It is the final stage of It is the final stage of spermatogenesis. Here, no cell division occurs. In spermiogenesis, no cell division occurs. Simply saying, in this process, what happens? During this process, during this process, the rounded spherical, the rounded spermatids transform into transform into elongated and slender Elongated and slender forms. Moreover, to say, we can say that the transformation of haploid, rounded, or spherical, moreover, to say, we can say that what is spermiogenesis? Let us define the transformation of. Transformation of what? Haploid, spherical, non-motile spermatids into functional, motile, elongated forms. Transformation of haploid, spherical, non motile spermatids which are produced which are produced from which are produced from second meiotic division into functional into functional Motile, functional, motile, elongated spawns.
is called okay we have written the transformation of spermatids into the sperms is called spermiogenesis elongated sperms is called or is known as spermiogenesis is called spermiogenesis transformation means only the structure is reformed many rearrangement rearrangement of organelles and the shape it changes from what from spherical to elongated form from non motile to motile from motile non motile means who can move itself is motile who cannot move itself that is non motile the spermatids were non motile so from non motile to motile form that is from spermatids were round and non motile now sperms are motile elongated and functional they are capable to fertilize the sperm the so we came to know what is spermiogenesis now just tell me why the spermiogenesis is essential first you note down all these why it is essential it is essential or it is highly needed the main cause of its need we can write out the main cause the main cause of its need is to its need is to increase the sperm motility to increase the sperm motility by reducing the weight by reducing the weight of the sperms reducing the weight and by reducing the development of locomotory organ locomotory organ or locomotory structure or locomotory organ that is nothing but the sperm tail how the transformation occurs the transformation occurs through a complex sequence of events transformation how it occurs how the spermiogenesis occurs how the answer is the transformation of spermatids transformation of spermatids into the sperm suckers through a complex through a complex sequence of events complex sequence of events series of events events such as condensation of the nucleus condensation of nucleus by how 
by losing water RNA acidic proteins by losing water RNAs and acidic proteins Resulting the narrow, slender, resulting the narrow, elongated, narrow, elongated, anteriorly pointed. Anteriorly pointed nucleus. Anteriorly pointed which can penetrate into the egg. Anteriorly pointed nucleus. Condensation means what? Condense. A large one becomes contracted to a small one. Condense. When it shrinks, condensation of the nucleus of the spermatid by losing the water RNA and uh, acidic proteins resulting into the narrow, elongated, anteriorly pointed. How it occurs? Suppose this is the spermatid with uh, the round nucleus. But here what happens? The nucleus remains within this condense and the nucleus is having the pointed anterior, anteriorly pointed like this. Then the whole structure how it forms we will see in under the structure of sperm. Now what the next event occurs? The, let us go for the next event is the formation of formation of eclosion. Formation of eclosion by condensation of Golgi bodies. The Golgi bodies condense, they come together, together they condense to form a structure called acrosome. It remains as the cape of the nucleus. It covers two-third of the, two-third part of the nucleus is a cape, cape-like structure. So, formation of acrosome by condensation of Golgi bodies, formation of sperm tail, formation of sperm tail, Write down the points. Next, the rearrangement. Rearrangement of cell organelles like like what are which organelles? Mitochondria. All the mitochondria of the spermatid, they clump together to form, what happens to mitochondria? They clump together, clump together to form a 
mitochondrial spiral mitochondrial spiral sheath known as niven cone known as niven cone niven cone is derived from two words niven and kernel kernel means the central part of something here we can it is meant for we can say that nucleus kernel means stands for nucleus and niven means beside why the mitochondrial sheath is considered as a niven cone because you see if this is the nucleus here is the acrosomal cap remains covering the two third part then here are two centrioles the proximal and distal we will discuss right now the distal centriole gives rise the axial filament and here the mitochondrial sheath present at this region making the middle piece it is the cell membrane but there is a constriction making the neck region there is the middle piece then the tail this middle within this middle piece this is the middle piece here the mitochondrial sheath this is the mitochondrial sheath present spirally surrounding means it is present surrounding the exoneme it is produced from the distal centriole but where it is present beside the nucleus if it is the nucleus here the condensed chromosome is present and beside the nucleus the mitochondrial sheath is present that's why it is known as niven cone known as niven cone then come to the next one we discuss the one of the organelle mitochondria and what happens to the centrioles there are two centrioles in the spermatid they come and arrange one after another this is red one is a proximal centriole proximal and the blue one is distal centriole distal proximal nearer to head away from head or towards the tail is the distal centriole the main point is that the distal centriole distal centriole develops or keeps rise produces the distal centriole produces produces the axial filament main axis axial filament of the sperm tail axial filament called exonym what it is called exonym axial filament of the sperm tail 
then the most important point how it loses the weight the sponge loses the weight reduction of the cytoplasm reduction of cytoplasm what happens during the spermiogenesis or spermatogenesis and even the final stage of the spermatogenesis during spermiogenesis that developing transforming sperms that when the spermatids are they transformed into the sperms they remain embedded within the cytoplasmic folds suppose here is the basement membrane here are the sortoli cells Here are the Sotoli cells. Here the sponge remain embedded. How? Like this. The spermatids are here. They develop their structure but the small tails are formed. They remain like this. During this spermiogenesis, during this process, the extra cytoplasm is disposed of by the Sertoli cells, causing the sludge of these sperms, the developing sperms. What happens? I told, as the Sertoli cells dispose, Sertoli cells. extract by absorbing the excess the excess cytoplasm extract the excess cytoplasm of the developing spawns Developing sperms that causes to sludge up. That causes the sperms to sludge up. Causes the sperms to sludge up. Sludge up from the sotoli cells. They come detached. The sperms are detached from the sotoli cells is the sotoli cells extract or dispose of they extract the excess cytoplasm from the sperm the developing sperms so that the developing sperm they sludge up from the or they detach from the sotoli cells thus this process of the process of the process of release of mature sperms release of matured sperms from sotoli cells into the into the lumen of seminiferous tubules is called is known as spermiation is known as known as spermiation already we have discussed before it, when they extract the sotoli cells, extract the excess cytoplasm, 
Then this mature spawns means the structure is already formed, the tail is formed, but it is short. The tails are short. Still they did uh, they still they have not attained the motility. Then what happens? Is they have not yet attained the motility after the spermation, these spawns when they are after spermation. A spermation means they are released into the lumen. Here is the seminiferous tubule means when they are released from the sotolicyl, they are, they are released into the lumen, into the internal cavity of the seminiferous tubule. When they are released into the lumen, at that time, by that time they have not attained the motility. So these are pushed to the epididymis. Through intratesticular ducts by the fluid secreted from the sotoli cells. Let me tell you again the fluid secreted from the sotoli cells they push the these release mature sperms into the epididymis which pass through the straight tubules, then the that is tubular recti, then recti testis, then vasai perinsia, then they enter into the epididymis. So the fluid secreted from sotoli cells, secreted from sotoli cells, pushes the sperms, pushes the sperms. Forward possess the sperms. Thus, they move into move into epididymis. In epididymis, they attain the maturity. In caput epididymis, they attain the maturity. That means the tail becomes larger. It attains the maturity. The sperms attain maturity. Attain maturity, that means maturity and capacity to fertilize and capacity to fertilize, to fertilize the eggs in epididymis. In epididymis exactly in the kapud head region or simply you can remember in epididymis they attain the maturity and capacity to fertilize the ovum then they are being stored in the epididymis in which part in the coda epididymis in the tail part of the epididymis they are being stored up to ejaculation during this storage within the epididymis the sperms are nourished by the nutritive fluid secreted from the epithelium of the epididymis the epithelium internal lining of the epididymis is secreted and remember one thing already we have discussed in the male reproductive system the lining of the epididymis the epithelial lining of the epididymis is secretive as well as absorptive if the sperms are not ejaculated they are absorbed by this by the epithelium by the epithelium of epididymis Okay, note down all these points.